Jesus. I hate people. I hate people. This is why they're the worst. Are you ready for it? What up? I'm oh, Rebecca. <laughs> I guess it's... Yeah, I was like, why are you laughing? <laughs> to make our voices more distinct. I'm just going to start talking like this. <laughs> Please. I was thinking that the last time I got feedback that we sound too much alike. I'm like, we'll just, we're just going to have Rebecca talk like a psychopath. <laughs> oh, I like this. I'm yeah. Rebecca. Or like Bunny. <laughs> or like Joey Lauren Adams. Okay, but I am Rebecca. I'm Rachel. We are... Identical twins with identical voices who love true crime, love a plot twist, hate people. Hate people and realize that y'all can't toss apart and have asked us to introduce ourselves, which is why we started pretty much every episode like that now. Also, guys, Rebecca speaking, Brendan Dassey, we know God, it's embarrassing Last episode, and it was the second no, we said it. Was two episodes ago, maybe, whatever. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know when it was, but when we were talking about making a murder for a second, and when we were talking, we said Brandon, and when I was listening back, the second we said it, I was like, it's Brendan right. Dassey. Which Obviously. is Obviously. Uh, so embarrassing. So embarrassing. So, sorry about that. No one had to correct us, but we know if you heard it, you were thinking it. Uh-huh. Promise. Right. We know. Um, I also noticed in that episode that whenever we talk about Patreon, we say the Patreon like we're old ladies. Uh, I like the Facebook. (laughs) The Facebook. Uh Uh-huh. So Um, we we also know it's just Patreon. Oh. I wouldn't have known. I don't know. (laughs) What do I know? Right. Same. But I do know that. That's all I really had at the top. Um, Y'all keep us posted on your favorite app so far and critiques you have. We're still yeah, small, yeah. so we will get and respond every comment. We'll see them all. Um, for sure. So far, our biggest critique is who's who. Right. So I think this is the first episode I, Rachel, have no idea which what you're doing. I hope that stays the case because there's a lot of um kind of ties to these places that like they went to UNC, they lived in Charleston. They, uh, I'm just like, wow, how have I not heard of this? Oh, so interesting. Oh God, it's a different kind of story today. But oh uh, yeah, you said that. I'm well intrigued. I know. You want me to get going? Um, I guess. Unless, is there anything else? God, I feel like we really jump into it these days. I know. I like. I think people like the no nonsense. Oh, that's a good question. Do you? <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. Well, someone said um, they didn't like when we talk about episodes. Like TV. Um, like TV episodes. And I'm like, okay, I get that. And, they're, and they even say, albeit it's always short. It's like two sentences they talk about it. But I'm like, all right, noted. I'm yeah. fine with that. That's not I'm, crucial to me. Well, unless like a... Unless I, mean, I really have an opinion that I need to vent about. I mean... Vanderpump Rules new season hasn't started yet, so oh, that's true. We may get into it some. Although Dependent. I was watching season three the other day, and nothing makes more sense in the world than Kristen driving a red Mustang. Just saying. Oh my God! Yes, <laughs> very yeah, no, on no offense, brand. On brand. That's all. I'll say person who doesn't like when we talk about TV. Love you. <laughs> that's it. That's all that's we have. It. That's all I have. Okay. I do, after speaking with you at the beach, have a feeling you're pregnant. Really? So, let us know. No. (laughs) (laughs) I do not think that. Really? Oh, you don't? I thought you thought that, too. Um, no. I mean, I had my period last week. Okay. Rebecca, update. Rebecca had her period last week. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Rachel Got thought on track. Rachel thought Rebecca might be. Oh, I thought you skipped it. No. And you felt like death after one glass of wine. Oh, I did feel like death after one glass of wine. So I was like, maybe it's a fake period and I am pregnant. I don't know. I'm not going to test until after Europe. 
<laughs> Look, Listen. sorry, I'm going in a week. If I'm pregnant, it's like five days pregnant. Oh, okay. Never mind then. I thought you like really missed it. Is that controversial to say that I'm not going to take a test till after Europe? No, I think okay. it's relatable. Uh, okay. <laughs> leave all that. Leave Are every leave? ounce of that. Yeah. Haley, yeah. I stop her asking you to leave all. Well, yeah, you know. <laughs> Just leave all of it. I'm telling leave you. all of it. All right. Now we can get started. Okay. You're up. Here I go. Again, I, Rebecca, will be telling my story about Nation and Jamie Hahn and John Broyhill. Sources are Sword and Scale, episode 98. There are interviews and footage that won't be in this episode, so I highly recommend um, listening to it. I was sobbing by the end of it. I don't know. It's just, I hope I don't telling it, but. Oh my God. Am I going to cry hearing it? I don't know. No, I don't think so because I just got emotionally attached during that. And the weird thing, I was driving and I needed a podcast, but I was like, I can't, I have no time to dick around and read descriptions. So I just scrolled, 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 went all the way back. That Sword and Scale, he's been doing it since like 2016 and it's episode 98, which was like maybe beginning of 2017. And I just like played it without the description. I was like, holy shit. Um, oh my God. Yeah. So, Sword and Scale, episode 98, journalnow.com, abc.com, and wral.com. All right. Nation Han was going to school at UNC Chapel Hill when he met a girl named Jamie working on the John Edwards campaign. They were friends at first, and he talks about the first time. <laughs> so cute and relatable. He talks about the first time she dropped him off after a party. And he like kind of lingered in the car, you know, that, like awkward, like do I kiss oh. her type of moment. And she said, he said that she goes, Good night. And he said, Good night. And then just sat there. And she, then she goes, Tonight was fun. He's like, Yeah, it was. And she again said, Okay, well, good night. And he's like, Good night. And then he got out. I was like, oh. I know the exact, like kind of awkward but oh. butterflies feelings that is. Oh, my God. It's exciting, and I don't (laughs) miss that at all. I know. After John Edwards dropped out of the Democratic race in January 2008, they went to the reception party, and he kissed her for the first time on the balcony. And from that point on, (laughs) they're inseparable. They graduated from college that May, and by June, he had bought an engagement ring, which seems very quick, I know. But Jamie had told her mom from the beginning she knew they'd get married. So I guess when you know, you know. And I know a few episodes ago, I did say, like, don't get married young, but I'm just, you know, a walking contradiction because they're cute. Yeah, we're rooting for them. Yeah. Or just do whatever you want. Get married young, old, no one cares. You don't know if we're rooting for them. Oh, you're right. Oh, my God. (laughs) I might forgot I might hate them. I'm kidding. They were living in Charleston at the time, and one night he made her dinner and asked her to go walk on the battery downtown and that's where he popped the question. Oh, cute. So many roaches around. But, okay. Oh, my God. Yeah. Is that, yeah, there are a lot on the battery, huh? Oh, my God. The summer I lived in Charleston, I used to beg not to get the night shift because going to my car, I parked in the battery because it was the only free parking downtown. Oh, my God. I would, like, sprint to my car every inch of that sidewalk is just those huge-ass roaches. If you're not from the South, you're blessed to not probably know what a roach is, maybe. Well, but if you're not, you deal with... How you dealt with roaches in Charleston was me dealing with rats in D.C. walking in my car, so... Or walking to the bus, so... Gross. Right. So anyway, yeah, now they're engaged. Nation asked his best friend, John Broyhill, to be the best man at his wedding. John and Nation met in 2000 at a church camp in Daytona, Florida, and were best friends throughout high school. John was actually older than Nation. He was a senior when Nation was a freshman, but they stayed really close. And when Nation met Jamie, John and Jamie became really close. Nation is a boy? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Nation's a, the guy. Jamie's the girl. John's yeah. their best friend. All right. John came to stay with them in Charleston one weekend, and that's when he come, came out and told them he was gay. They were both very supportive, and it made John and Jamie even closer. So April 18th, 2009, Jamie and Nation got married with John by their side, and then they moved to, from Charleston to Raleigh, North Carolina. And actually, so did John. So the three of them really became like three musketeers. 
John lived with Nation and Jamie while looking for a roommate and eventually moved into his own place. And during this time, Jamie started her own political consulting company called Sky Blue, and it almost immediately became successful. They were hired by Congressman Brad Miller's campaign in 2011, and Jamie started really need help on her workload. So she hired John to file reports with the Federal Election Commission, check all the emails, and cut the campaign checks uh, while she was head of fundraising and campaign strategy. God, I'm so not interested in that line of work. <laughs> That's I all I keep thinking about. But she's a thriving Democrat, so we can at least... Well, good for her for having direction and being entrepreneurial I know. and succeeding. I know. Good for her. Go, girl. I know. They're thriving, but in early 2012, John started having some health issues related to gallstones. It, start, it didn't start out serious. The doctors essentially told him to change his diet, but a few months later, the situation worsened. He said he didn't feel right. He was nauseous all the time. He had blinding headaches. Then one day, Jamie called Nation and said to come home because John had something to tell them. He was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, or MS. Right. Sad. We all probably know what that is, but essentially it's a disabling disease of the brain and spinal cord and attacks your central nervous system. So Jamie and Nation were devastated and dove right into research. Jamie read that like kale has some nutrients in it that will slow the symptoms down. So every night she cooked them kale. They're just... That's nice. Um, to slow the flu light symptoms of MS treatment, John planned to do injections on Saturday, rest on Sunday, and get back to work with Jamie on Monday. But the symptoms started setting in, and which makes you obviously move a lot slower. So he started coming to work a little later, which Jamie obviously was supportive of. They would also go on long walks because J Nation and Jamie, I'm just going to start calling them the Hans because that's their last name now, Nation and Jamie Han. Okay. The Hans read about how it breaks down your muscles. So they thought if you keep building muscle, that'll help. But the headaches were so debilitating and it was becoming harder for him. I guess it'll yeah. Oh. His memory loss was also very frustrating to him, so he started taking notes on everything, but even that was exhausting. God, I just cannot imagine these poor people. I oh, know, that's sad. He met regularly with the Hans friends, also battling MS for years. Her name was Pam, and they met for coffee, and she gave him a ton of resources, kind of tips on how to deal with it day to day, and introduced him to an MS support group. The lesions on his brain started growing, so the doctor recommended he switch to infusions for treatment, which took a few hours each week, and Jamie and Nation couldn't take time off work. So they had their friend Carol drop him off, pick him up, and usually made dinner for him. I'm feeling like this is sounding familiar, but I, I, well, I can't place it, so don't, don't you worry about it. So the Hans really did everything to help John, and the three remained very close even keeping up a Monday night tradition where Jamie would cook them dinner and they would watch The Bachelorette. And since The Bachelorette is a three-hour commitment, John would typically spend the night on Mondays. Oh, Which my really, God. It is a three-hour commitment. 95% of it is B-roll. It's just <laughs> scenery settings. It's The Bachelorette staring off into the sunset. Uh-huh. That's 50% it, of it. And then 25% is them looking awkwardly at the camera or fighting or something and then or asking can i interrupt wait can i steal her for a second yeah so that that, that show could be 20 minutes tops <laughs> if i was in charge totally when brad miller's campaign ended jamie couldn't afford to pay john anymore so he found a job with a company called lab lab corp which oh, is a, yeah very yeah. well known oh yeah it's headquartered in north carolina which is yeah Oh, it is? I think so. It's a life sciences company that does advanced diagnostic testing. All the testings in LabCorp. Yeah. But before long, John was feeling more and more sick, nauseous, throwing up, the whole thing. So he went to the doctor, and it turned out he did need surgery to remove those gallstones. This is probably dumb. And, and th this is Rachel, by the way. Hi. <laughs> hey. Hey there. How the hell are you? I do not think... I know what gallstones are i think I mean, it's just kidney stones in your gallbladder essentially They're that's exactly what i figured but i okay I, I mean i think i knew and then i kept hearing that word and i was like I, that just doesn't sound familiar i have had kidney stones i wouldn't wish that on 
my worst enemy. It was worse than labor. It was worse than anything. Oh, God. I've never had them. And what also, in the... Oh, God, bless you. Um, also, I think LabCorp's headquartered in Asheville, where I live. So there you there's go. that. That's why I know them so well. Yeah, duh. There we go. So Jamie offered to pick him up, and he recovered at the in the Hans guest room for that week. After a few days, he was able to bring himself downstairs, and he saw Nation and just started sobbing into his chest. Nation was actually on the phone, so he hung up on whoever it was and asked what was wrong. And John told him that the doctor said they noticed a spot during surgery that they had to biopsy. He said they think it could be pancreatic cancer, and he was scared. Oh, my God. How old is he? Like In the early 30s, like 33 at this point, I think. Oh, my God. No shit. The Hans had a beach trip planned that next week for their anniversary, but they pushed it back to take John to his biopsy appointment at the Duke Cancer Center. After two hours of waiting, John came into the lobby and broke the news that it was, in fact, pancreatic cancer. Even though the doctors were hopeful, Jamie and Nation knew the survival rate was not good, and they were very shaken up. That night, Jamie even told Nation she wanted to have a baby, which they had never talked about before, but she said they, she wanted him or her to know all the people they love and it was just a hit of reality that some people they love might not be here that long. Oh. I don't know. The following week, John had to go back for a scope and more testing, and Jamie offered to take him. The appointment was early on Tuesday morning, so Jamie suggested he come over the night before and stay with them and ask if he could help her look over a few financial discrepancies that came to light on the Brad Miller campaign. So he did. Nation came home from work that Monday night and was about to go, to, go on a run when he heard Jamie scream downstairs, and he yelled, what? And she didn't answer. Then she yelled his name and John's name. So he started running down the stairs, thinking that John's collapsed, and asked her what's happening. And she yells, he's trying to kill me. <gasps> oh. Mm-hmm. So he rounds the corner, and he sees blood everywhere. Jamie is on the ground, and John is standing over her with a knife. Oh what? It's so bad. When John sees Nation, he turns his attention to him and... Nation screams, what the fuck are you doing? And John plunges at him. They start fighting. Nation's grabbing the blade side of the knife, so he's bleeding profusely, too. Oh, Ugh. God. All while yelling yelling at Jamie to get out of the house. While wrestling John, he keeps asking what the fuck he's doing, and John's not responding, which is creepy. I guess it's just creepy in a way. Nation eventually hears the side door close, open and close, so he knows that Jamie got out, and he tires John out enough to where he can get away and runs out the side door and down the driveway to his neighbor's house. But at this point, he can't. He doesn't know where Jamie went. Oh, my God. I'm, like, in silence because, never mind, this is not familiar. Now I do wish gallstones on him. Done. Uh-huh. Done. There you go. There. Um, Sames. This is when I found myself drive at a four-hour drive. I found myself mouth open for the remainder of this oh interview. I was lit. I'm, oh, God. Okay. So Julie and Bill, the neighbors, see a bloody John run up to the door yelling for help and that his wife needs help. They first pulled their two young daughters from the living room and ordered them to go upstairs and lock the doors. She lets Nation in the back door, locks it. They run to the front door to lock it, and they see Jamie lying on their walkway. Bill the neighbor's husband, is grabbing towels to try and stop the bleeding and Nation's frantically trying to explain what happened. Another neighbor, Angie, heard Nation's cry for help and calls 911 while running over to Julian Bills. And the 911 call, oh God, you can hear it. It is so stressful. I was sobbing. Oh my God. It's just, it's so chaotic and sad. The dispatcher's trying to get as much information out of Angie as possible, but she wasn't, she doesn't know anything. It's just, Pure commotion. You can hear Jamie moaning in the background. And it's just four adults frantically trying to help. It's it's a tough, yeah. tough one to listen to. Yeah. They ask who stabbed Jamie, and Nation says, my best friend. Which kind of, it just tears your heart out. It's just, yeah. Already getting a little shaky voice. And the saddest part's not even up yet. Oh, God. But like, it was his best friend. The, this guy you met at church camp in high school, you were... He was your best man at your wedding. You and your wife were the first people he came out to. He worked with y'all, lived with y'all. I, right. Uh, They've done so much for him. Like, right. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Okay. 
So the 911 operator is giving Angie all these instructions, like elevate her legs, keep pressure on the stab wounds, do not lift her, everything like that. Angie tells them, <laughs> what? <laughs> Obvious. Obviously. No, just, I was like, what are elevator legs? <laughs> oh my God. I was like, what is she talking about? And then I was like, oh, elevate her legs. <laughs> oh my God. You look so dumb right, right now. now. What about elevator legs? <laughs> Oh my god! I'm sorry, this is not a funny scenario. But I re- for <laughs> did my solid get lazy. Yes, for a solid <laughs> three seconds after you said that, I was like, "What <laughs> did she just say about her legs?" Elevate her legs. Rebecca oh, said, "Elevator <laughs> legs." <laughs> what are elevator legs? Oh my god, that is so helpful during this terrible time. Thank you. I know. You're welcome. All right, go on. I'm scared. (laughs) So Angie tells them she's talking and responding. Then about five seconds later, she corrects herself and tells dispatch, Jamie is now fading out of consciousness and whispering, I love you to nation. That I I had to read. I was sobbing during that. Oh, my God. He's trying to keep her awake, saying they have a lot of anniversaries to celebrate. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) I know. I had to read this paragraph like, Five times so I could get used to it. Cause I, well, I texted you the other morning, be like, I'm gonna cry during my story. It's just all right. Rebecca's crying. Yeah. Sorry. No, I just got shaky voice. I'm good. Okay. So he tells her they have a lot of anniversaries to celebrate and they're going back to the beach when she gets better, but she tells them she can't breathe. Oh, no. Hold on. Just gotta gather myself. Oh, God. Does it get worse? No, that was it. That's the paragraph when I texted you yesterday morning being like I can't stop crying so I had to read it like five times today to get used to it but it didn't work didn't work but your elevator legs was helpful oh you're welcome yeah thought about holding off but I was like I bet other people heard (laughs) elevator legs too uh you can leave that all in Jamie I mean sorry Haley Haley oh I mean Jamie ah So the cops and EMT get there, and Nation tells them John Broyhill is the person who stabbed her. He's in the house. He tells them what he's wearing, tells them where he left him, everything. So the paramedics rush Jamie and Nation to the hospital while the cops surround the house, telling that loser to get the fuck out. Guns Mm -hmm. drawn. Yeah. After four commands of the, you know, if there's anyone in the house, make yourself known commands, John opens the front door with his hands up, then collapses. Oh, no. Did he kill himself? No, that would be so... I mean, well, they run up to him, and both wrists were slit very deeply, and he had stabbed himself so badly in the stomach that his intestines were falling out. Oh, my God. I'm going to vomit. I know. Paramedics rushed that fucker to the hospital because they were not going to let him die, and he doesn't. So I just want to get that out of the way right now. Phew. I I know, because when I heard that, I was like, this is... I'm about to change it if we don't know what's going on. Yeah. So I just want to get that out of the way in case you change us. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Nation got his hands stitched up and sat by Jamie's side in ICU. But on April 24th, 2013, she died around 2 a.m. Nation holding her hand. No. <laughs> oh, I really did not expect that. I don't know. He thought it was a survivor story. It's not. How old was she? 29. And this is all, like, I lived in Asheville during this time. Like, I, I know. do not I, think I heard this story. I know. That's what I'm like, why haven't I heard this? Oh, well, they were no. in Raleigh, you know, not Nashville, but. I know, but still, that's a, it, I don't know. I know. All right, let's get to this fucker. Oh, my God. Remember how I told you? That Jamie asked John to stay with them the day before his surgery to go over the financial discrepancies the night before the murder, really. Yes. The financial discrepancy of the Brad Miller campaign. Yeah. Um, well, John was stealing it. He wrote 39 checks from the campaign to himself. He embezzled almost $50,000. But it wasn't for MS or cancer treatments because he didn't have either. I knew it, actually. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was my feeling, too, once I heard it. But I was like, mm-hmm. It was all bullshit. 
the headaches, the fatigues, the surgeries. When he met with Pam, the Hans friends who actually had MS, he went to better imitate someone who actually had it. He met her, he like would study her mannerisms. What? Wait, they were like at the Duke Cancer Center. I'll get there. Lobby. Yeah. Okay. I'll get there. He just like hid in the bathroom for okay, go, sorry, go on. The gallstone surgery where he recovered in the Hans guest room the entire week, what he was recovering from a surgery that never happened. And that spot he found on that fake surgery when Jamie and Nation pushed back their beach trip to take him to the biopsy appointment. Well, on the way there, he was in the back seat Googling the following. Oh, my God. Pancreatic cancer risk factors, pancreatic cancer medical letters, and list of oncologists at Duke Cancer Center. They oh. pulled the record, the times exactly. He was in the back seat Googling that. Oh, my God. When they got there, they waited two hours. John was walking around the halls. Just making the rounds? Two hours. It, did no one stop and be like, can we help you? Yeah, he, he, when Jamie and Nation walked in, he was already talking to the receptionist, and I guess he name-dropped one of the oncologists, or it was like any, um, I don't know. I don't know how he got back there, but he went through the double doors. Nation talk, says that. Oh, Walked my. around the halls for two hours. Lunatic. Mm-hmm. Remember, this was the night Jamie told Nation she wanted to have a baby so he or she could get to know the people they love, being John fucking Broyhill. Monster. Gross. But the mode, why he did it, this is, here's where it's pretty unsatisfied. Oh, wait. Can I tell my theory? Oh, sure. I think he lied about being gay so he could move in with them and he was like in love with Oh, Jamie. interesting. I question if he was um, actually gay, but I think other it, sources. Oh, that's interesting, but no. no? <laughs> All right. I thought I thought it could be a good ploy to get in there and like let him be trusted to, you know, hang out with your wife nonstop and you're not yeah. a threat. Nice try, but no. Remember <laughs> when the professor said that to me? Rebecca in <laughs> college. Sorry, real quick. We're really not trying to make light of this story. There's just like... Oh, I've already cried during it. They know, please. Okay. Um, In college, Rebecca was in a marketing class, and there was like a huge weight of participation, and she never wanted to participate. (laughs) And then finally, she like had a great question. She thought... Or no, not a question. He asked a question. She was like, oh, I got this. Here come my participation. She raised her hand all confidently delivered some <laughs> dumbass answer <laughs> and he goes dr sam Callie, i'll never forget yeah so, so no but thanks <laughs> <laughs> me and my friends could not stop laughing i felt like an idiot i wasn't even in there and i knew every ounce of that story <laughs> he, he wanted you to participate then he's gonna shame shut you if you get it wrong <laughs> shut up you like an quick. idiot <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, we were like silent laughing the entire rest of the class. <laughs> God, I'm never doing that again. So four days after the murder, Raleigh detective Zeke Morris went to the hospital to interview John and recorded it, but he's in such bad shape. You can barely hear him. It's a whisper. He admits he's never had MS and pancreatic cancer. Duh. Never had the gallbladder surgery. Duh. <laughs> you Rebecca's too many face. Duds. I know you don't get too many does, but your face when you did that was uh, so good. Yeah. It's a shame we're on a pod. I know. Maybe um, on the Patreon, we can do video pods. That's oh, what, God. I know. It's going to be a disaster. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Um, the detective asked what he did at the doctor's appointment. He said walking around the halls. So he admitted all that. Um, he admitted the Googling everything. The detective asked why he told people that. He said the wheels felt like they were coming off the bus. He asked if he liked the attention. He said, no, I don't. I didn't like the attention because I have a lot of wonderful friends. That's the thing that concerned me because I didn't mean it, which this response makes no sense. I assume he's on morphine. He's on kind of loopy from the the lame attempt at suicide. But Mm -hmm. so then the detective asked things like, I'll just do like a question answer type thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you ever think about telling Nation and Jamie the truth? Yes. Why didn't you? Good question. What started the embezzlement? Were you late on bills? No, there was really no reason for it. How long were you carrying that knife before killing Jamie and attempting to kill Nation? Two to three weeks. 
did you kill her because she discovered the embezzlement? I've given that a lot of thought, but if it was just about the embezzlement, I would have faced it. <sighs> what? Lastly, he says, what do you remember about the murder? And he says, I just remember stabbing her in the back. It's literally the most unsatisfying interview I've ever heard. Yeah. I'm like, okay. In 2015, his trial took about a month. His defense admitted that he did do it. They didn't argue that whether he did it or not. They did argue that he was in he wasn't mentally stable and only had interest in killing himself. Quote, he loved the Hans would and would never intentionally hurt them. Excuse me? Except for that time he killed one. Yeah. Except for that time he did. So that's very confusing, sir. <laughs> that's such a good defense. Right. I, I guess it's to convince jurors that it wasn't premeditated, but he had the knife for two to three weeks before, beforehand. I mean, maybe that was for your own suicide. I find it very hard to believe that anyone would do a self-inflicting stab to kill themselves. I just it, do. Like, it's not guaranteed. Like, it's just so painful and slow, I'm sure. Oof. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I think him attempting to kill himself via stabbing himself was that wasn't premeditated. I think he panicked after Nation and Jamie got away and he didn't know what else to do. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. To paint the entire picture, he apparently wasn't happy with himself. His family called him demon possessed after he came out to them. So he was lonely, which is terrible. Can't imagine having an unsupportive family like that. But the Huns became your new family. So like, yeah. My thought was, were you so angry at your own family, you took it out on your new one? I just can't think of a motive. I don't know why he would do it. But, like, you know, you hear those killers who got re rejected from women all their lives and target one unrelated random individual and take yeah. it out of them, you know. So I'm like, is that it? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, jurors weren't, fi weren't buying it, found them guilty of first-degree murder, Guilty of attempted first-degree murder and guilty of assault with a deadly we weapon with the intent to kill. He sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The victim impact statements. Uh -oh. I Just thinking about them gave me goosebumps. They're so brutal. I really want to insert John's here. It's on YouTube. Do you think we can? Or is that not allowed? That's probably not allowed. Is it like a, it's a professional, like a news clip? Like a news uh, no, I don't think so. Is it like someone recording a TV or like a <laughs> no, news I, station put it out there? No, I mean, it's more professional than a, someone recording their TV. So, I mean, YouTube I mean. will say if it's copyrighted, but oh, who okay. knows? But okay, so if it's not, I can. <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> sure. I tried, to, I tried yes. to look it up and I was like, uh, I'll just ask Rage. You're in marketing. Oh. I know, but it will, they'll usually put their copyright information on the YouTube. So, all right. Well, I would imagine I might maybe. roll the dice here. I might <laughs> roll the dice here because it's heart wrenching yet powerful as he addresses his best friend, the best man at his wedding. I'm just, it's so shocking. But, um, and sorry, Nations victim impact state. Obviously. Did I say John? Just, I think you said John. Uh, did not mean it. I want to give a damn about. He's not a victim. He doesn't. I was get like, why does he get to talk? Well, my apologies. He doesn't get to speak. Um, no, nation's impact statement is horrible. I mean, it's just so sad. But if I, in case um I can't or I look into it, I don't know if I want you to put it in there if you're allowed to. Well, no, it's it's like a minute and a half long, and it's just really paints it just makes you emotional to him like emotionally connected to <laughs> the story and her he talks about how wonderful she is but in case i can't or in case we don't do it and i might roll the dice peeps i might just do it the biggest thing that stuck out to me is when he said we lock our doors at night to keep evil out but what happens when evil has a key you can't prepare for that and it's true it's just heartbreaking That's... like this is your best man yeah oh god oh i know um, and in 2013, they started the Jamie Kirk Hahn Fund, which provides grants to expand opportunity for North Carolinians. And the description on his LinkedIn is, inspired by the legacy of Jamie Kirk Hahn, we empower and motivate emerging leaders to lift up their communities, their state, and their world. In other words, we help the helpers. Oh, good for them. I know. 
Brad Miller said she was a had a gift for bringing us together, black and white, young and old, gay and straight. She challenged us to work together for a better world. Her light will shine on all of us who knew and loved her. And then Nation also wrote a Medium article called Essential Goodness, talking about Jamie and what he's gone through. If you need a good cry sesh. <gasps> oh, God. Uh, Essential goodness. Essential goodness. But mm. really, listen to Nation talk about it on Sword and Scale. It is just... Whew. Oh, I was going to ask who the interview on Sword and Scale was with. It's with Nation. All Nation, yeah. Oh, he is brave. He's brave, and it just he makes me so emotionally attached to this cute couple. And that's okay. the awful story about Jamie and Nation Han and the monster of John Broyhill. He is a monster. I know. I just like. No, I didn't see it coming. But also that quick Google. I didn't realize he was that much old. He seems a lot older than them. Um, well, he's only about four years older than them. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, he was 33 when he murdered Jamie, who was 29. Yeah. Oh, God, that is terrible. I know. It's just shocking. And there's really no motive. He just snapped. Oh, I hate that. I Trust know. no one. Here's Trust the- no one. Here's it is. People are the worst, even your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> Keep your head down. Don't talk to a soul. Don't meet anyone. Don't meet anyone. It's just really that's a lesson here. So <laughs> crazy, huh? So have a great day. So have a good one. Um, yeah. Great job. Thanks. Um, next week, you, Rach goes up. Batter up. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay, great. We always say that. Well, it's it leaves them wanting more. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like the lamest story. It's going to be the best. It, it's stories within stories, too. So if you liked that within my John List story, you're going to love this one. All right. Great. So there's your pitch. Okay. Your elevator pitch. <laughs> <laughs> elevator if, you've, if you've listened this far, you know it came full circle back to an elevator. <laughs> y'all, thank y'all so Thanks much. for listening. Tell everyone. Love y'all. Y'all are the best. People are the worst. See, See ya. ya.